Hey guys, it's GED question of the daytime, and it looks like we've been told to solve the inequality, and um, it says for P, but as one of my students pointed out to me, there's no P in this inequality, so I think there's a typo here. Kate makes mistakes, and she's human, guys. Surprise, surprise. I think really what I meant to say here was solve the inequality for X. Um, now, the good news is your GED test questions get vetted like thousands of times before you guys get them, so they probably won't screw up like I did. But solve the inequality for X. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say get X alone. Now, an inequality is very, very similar to an equation. Um, all the rules that we've been using solving equations are going to apply. Um, there's not a whole lot of differences, but the thing about inequalities is they don't have equal signs. Instead, what they do have is inequality signs, like this side is less than that side, or this side is greater than that side, or this expression is less than or equal to that side, or greater than or equal to that side. Those are the four inequality symbols we could see. Now, this particular inequality that we're looking at is got one more thing that's new to it. It's that it's three-sided. There are three expressions. Notice I have the number 13 and then an inequality sign. So 13 is the first expression. Then I have the expression 2x minus 1 and then another inequality. So 2x minus 1 is the second expression. And then I have another number 85. Um, and that's all by itself after an inequality symbol. So that's another expression. So this is a compound inequality. It's got, we've seen all these things that only have two sides, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. This actually has like three sides because it has three expressions that are separated by inequality symbols. Now, the good news is even though this looks weird and scary, all the rules of equations are going to apply. The only difference is, you know that rule when I'm solving whatever I do, I have to do to both sides? Here, whatever I do, I'll have to do to... I shouldn't say whatever I do. That's not clear enough language. Let me try again. Whatever change I make, that's a better way to put it. If I make a change, because you know in inequalities we're allowed to make changes on the equations when we're solving, we are allowed to do the opposite of what we've been told, but only usually if I do it to both sides. Here there's three sides, so I'm going to have to do it to all three sides. And really, besides that, this is going to roll just like our equations. Let me show you what I mean. Notice where x is right now. x is in the middle, and that's exactly where, where I want x to be. I actually want to try to sandwich x's value between two numbers, like saying x is between 5 and 7. That's exactly how these compound inequalities work. And so in order to do that, I'm going to have to get rid of two numbers. I'm going to have to get rid of this 2 that's multiplying with x, and I'm going to have to get rid of this 1 that's subtracting with x. Let's go ahead and get rid of those the way we always do by using the inverse operation. The inverse operation. Great. So we'll get rid of the subtract 1 first by adding 1. I'm going to get rid of the subtract 1 by adding 1. Now, hopefully that looks familiar. We've been solving equations. Here's where the difference is going to come in. If you added 1 to the middle, you're going to have to add 1 to the left-hand side and 1 to the right-hand side. We're going to have to add 1 to all three expressions so that the three expressions will stay in the same relationship that they've always been in. So 13 plus 1 is 14. Okay, then I'll keep my inequality symbol the same. Then subtracting 1 and adding 1 are opposites, so they cancel out. So all that's left in the middle is 2x. And then 85 plus 1 is 86. Great, I'm almost done. My x is almost alone. But it has this 2 that it's multiplying with. So the opposite, I know they're multiplying because they're shoved together, guys. The opposite of multiplying is dividing, so I'll divide by 2. And you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to all of the expressions. So I do it to all three of the expressions here so that my relationship will stay balanced. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, which is less than... Multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 cancel, leaving me with just x. When that x is left then, less than um, 86 divided by 2 is 43. 
Um, and now I know I'm done because my X is alone. It's alone in the middle here. And so what I just figured out is that X is between 7 and 43. 7 is less than X, but X is less than 43. So if I were to draw this one on a number line, the number line has to at least include 7 and 43. Now, could you put all the little dashes and all the numbers in between? Yeah, you can, but I don't know how much time you have or how big your piece of paper is. I'm just going to make sure 7 and 43 go on there. This is a strictly less than sign. It doesn't have the little equal sign on the bottom. So that means it's okay um, to go up to 7 but not include 7. So use a round open dot. Okay. Same thing on the 43. This is a strictly less than sign. We don't have that little equal bar underneath like we sometimes do. And so I'm going to have an open dot an open dot, because we're going to go up to 43 but not include it. And see how X is between those two numbers? I'm going to shade the line between there. So 7 is something less than this X portion, which is something less than 43. Great. So two different ways to write this answer. This is writing it as an inequality. This is graphing your answer on a number line. Okay, but um, they both mean the same thing. Um, so if you have any questions about this one, it's a little bit of a tricky in inequality, um, make sure that you ask me. I definitely could see this popping up on your GED.